Hi everybody, it's Crystal. Welcome to my channel, Bag of Day Crochet, where we talk about um, anything and everything that is yarn and crochet related, and every once in a while knit. So if that's something that interests you, you can always hit that subscribe button if you'd like. All right, today I was going to do a short video. Now, uh, this video isn't meant for you to like bash me in the comments, because um, it's just like personal preference video, or per yeah, personal preference video. But I would be very interested in you leaving your preferences, preferences, you know what I mean, in the comments below of, of, the, of this. So um, I'm going to tell you six um, things, the six major things that I do not do in crochet that a lot of people would say that you are supposed to do. I guess it depends on the person or who you ask, but these are things that I do not do when it comes to crochet. Now remember, personal preference to each their own, how boring it would be if we were all the same. If you're going to hate on me for any of these, leave it in the comments below so I can delete it. Okay, <laughs> anyways, number one, thing now these are not in any really in any particular order um that i do not do when i crochet is i never mix yarn weights in a project so if i'm crocheting something and uh like a sweater or any, you know anything shawl or something i will never mix two different weights together different brands of yarn yes um, but never different weights. And I know that some people are going to say, well, some brands, some four-way brands are different than other four-way brands. And you would be correct in saying that. But in my mind, that's okay. As long as they both say that they're a four-weight or if they both say that they're a three-weight. I'll mix the brands together, but I will never mix a two-weight with a four-weight or anything like that. So that's one thing back day crochet will never do. Mix yarn weights. All right. Um, another thing that I do not do is gauge my work. Never, never, ever, ever, ever have ever gauged anything that I crochet. I know that it's very important to some people, especially it's very important when you're doing clothing. Now, um, since uh, I do tutorials, uh, I used to not do that, but my new tutor newer tutorials, when I do clothing, I will make a gauge swatch for those that do gauge, but I have no reason to gauge anything because I make my own clothing to fit me. You know what I mean? So I personally don't have a reason to gauge. Um, and if I... If there was something else that called for a gauge, like a shawl, or I, I don't know what what kind of stuff calls for gauges, blankets, I wouldn't do it anyways. So I'm a no gauge person. So, so that's two. Um, number three is I never match dye lots of yarn. Never, ever do I match dye lots. I know, right? What am I thinking? I'm thinking that it doesn't bother me to not match dye lots. Um, I think technology today is really advanced and they're pretty good at getting the colors pretty well close. And if they're not, they're close enough for me. So no, I never ever match dye lots. I will tell you, if there's ever a place that I, I, that I have matched dye lots a couple times it would be Hobby Lobby. They are the ones that have, I think, have yarns that the dye lots are very noticeable if they're not matched. But I rarely go to Hobby Lobby. So, no, I don't match dye lots when I go to Joann's, Michael's, anywhere. I just throw it in the cart. I do not care about dye lots at all. And I don't care about it. So, <laughs> um, the next thing, oh, this, this, this is a big one too. I never block my work. Everything that you've seen on my YouTube channel, everything, nothing is blocked ever. 
I have blocked one thing my entire life. Now, I've been crocheting since I was 10. One thing I blocked was a fillet when I used to be able to work with thread. I can't do it anymore. I crocheted a fillet crochet doily thing with my last name in it, you know, and gave it to my mother-in-law for Christmas. I blocked that. That was the only thing that I've ever blocked in my entire life. Now, I know there's benefits to blocking. Um, I, I understand why people do it. I don't do it because, um, well, I'm lazy when it comes to that. Two, I don't think it makes a big enough difference um, in the type of things that I crochet that it really needs to be blocked. And third, like if I was to block a shawl or something, it would just have to be reblocked after it was washed anyways. So it's just like, I don't do it. I just don't do it. And you know, it's okay if people do it. I don't care that people do it. I mean, like I said, there are benefits to blocking. It makes things look nicer. I can, I can see that, especially things that are like lacy and dainty and getting your granny squares nice and straight. This is something that, that, I, that I don't do. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, I don't crochet afghans. I don't crochet them. Um, either my husband will crochet. I will, like, if I teach, you know, you're, you're probably like, well, you got afghans on your channel. I do. Um, either my husband will crochet the simple ones. Like, I'll teach it and start it, and he'll finish it. Or... I will teach how to crochet it and I commission those out to other people. I pay people to crochet those so you can see what the full afghan looks like. I do not crochet afghans. Um, they are very boring to me to crochet. I, I Something happened to me when I was a, ch a child. That's what it is. I had a childhood crochet trauma that made me I never like to crochet afghans again. Because when I was young... And the lady that taught me to crochet, she wouldn't let me start a project till I finished. And I just got it when I was little in my in, in my system that I was going to crochet an afghan. Well, I got bored after a little bit. She wouldn't let me stop till I was finished. I had to sit there forever and ever and ever until I finished that afghan. And after that, I never wanted to do another afghan again. Never. So, the ones that you see on my channel, either my husband finished or they were commissioned out to other people. But I did design them and I did teach the tutorial. Okay? That's a bag of day uh, secret. <laughs> okay. The last thing I, that I never do in crochet is I don't read patterns nor do I write them. And uh, I don't know how to read patterns nor do I know how to write them. And some people cannot understand how I can crochet without knowing how to write a pattern. But you have to think about, like, grab something here. You have to think about, I'm a pattern designer, I'm a crochet designer, like this person was. They designed that and made a pattern. They didn't have a pattern for that. They made it up out of their head. That's what I do. And then I have someone else write my patterns for my video tutorials because I can't write them. So that, that's, that's the way that works. Um, I can't read a pattern, nor do I have any interest in doing it because I was taught not to read the, to crochet without having to read a pattern. So therefore that's how I can do it. I design things um, like for YouTube, like I'm just using YouTube as an example. And then, you know, I just, just make, you know, I can make things out of my head because I have such a library of stitches in my head from when I was younger. I was taught all the stitches, discipline style. Anyways, that's another, that's another story. Um, I was taught old school. <laughs> a ruler. Anyways, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Anyways, uh, I, I have such a vast uh, library of stitches in my head. It's easy for me to come up with different stitches in their multiples really quickly. So, um, I can design things on YouTube. I don't need a pattern for that at all. I don't need patterns to design things off the top of my head. And neither do any of these people that design, that design things, you know. They just, you know, they make, they make these things up um, at the, on top of their head. 
and then they write patterns out for them. Well, again, that comes back to the part that I don't know how to write a pattern either. So when I do the tutorial, um, after I, you know, I make it up, sometimes I make it up as I go. Um, and then I do the tutorial, someone else will watch the tutorial and write out the pattern for me, the written pattern, because I can't read nor write patterns. And like I said, I don't really have a desire to learn because I have no need for it, shall I say. And that, that takes me back to the gauge, I guess. Um, when I do clothing, I don't need to gauge anything because I'm making it for myself for a tutorial. I'm making it to fit me. So there's no, ga I don't have to gauge what I'm doing. I just crochet it to fit my body. But I can understand how the gauge would be, would be beneficial to other people you know I guess that you know for clothing so that's why I make a gauge swatch now uh, for my clothing but I wouldn't gauge hats or scarves or blankets if you're supposed to I don't I don't even know anything about that I just I don't do it so but anyway so yes those are six things that Bagoday never does in crochet how about you why don't you tell me in the comments a few things that you never do when it comes to crochet or knitting I'm interested um Remember, don't give me no hay. I'm not saying that, that it, you, if any of that stuff there is wrong if you do it. None of it is. I, it all has benefits. Um, but to me, I just don't do it. So, you know, to each their own, right? So, yeah, let me know in the comments what you don't do when it comes to crochet or knit. I'm going to read over them. I'm curious. I'm curious now. All right? I'll see you guys on my next video. Hey, don't tell a little giveaway bag of day secrets that I don't crochet afghans. That those are commissioned uh, afghan pieces. <laughs> Bye, guys.